This week on the Driving Sports TV Extra, we've got the five finest and the five funkiest from the 2009 LA Auto Show. Driving Sports TV is brought to you by Rally Tech Performance. Eager to put a miserable 2009 behind them, car makers couldn't wait to unveil the 2010s at this year's LA Auto Show. And just like the city that hosts it, the industry rolled out another model mix of excess and environmentalism, style and silliness. First, the good stuff. There weren't any 10,000 pound Escalades at this year's show, nor were there any cars rolling on 43 inch diamond studded spinners. Yo. Thank God. There were lots of cars worth drooling over. We managed to whittle down to our five favorites. Number five, the Ford Fiesta and Mazda 2. Both these cars are basically the same and have been enjoyed by our European cousins for far too long. In 2010, they're finally coming to the US and they're bringing their perky little 1.6 liter motors with them. Number four, the Mini Cooper Roadster. We love minis, we love roadsters. Word is this little rake has already been approved for production. Number three, the 2011 Ford Mustang. We covered it on a previous show, and any car that gets both 300 horsepower and 30 miles per gallon is a winner in our books. Who cares if it has a solid rear axle? You don't need independent suspension for big smoky burnouts, and that is what the Ford Mustang is all about. Number two, the Lexus LFA. From the same company that brought us the trophy car of the pseudo-environmentalism movement, the Prius, comes a 552 horsepower supercar with a 200 mile an hour top speed. Okay, Toyota, we now forgive you for the whole Prius thing. And number one, the Audi R8 Spider. With a 518 horsepower 5.2 liter V10 and a drop top roof, the only thing sexier is Scarlett Johansson wrestling Gwyneth Paltrow in a giant mound of red jello. John Favreau, are you listening? You haven't done reshoots yet for Iron Man. Let's see what we can do. And now on the other side of the coin. We've also tracked down the worst cars from this year's LA Auto Show. And it took some work, but we narrowed it down to just five. Number five, the Porsche Panamera. It's a Cayenne with short legs. It's built for people that have too much money, want four doors, but they need that Porsche logo on the front of their car. Number four, the Mini Cooper Coupe. We hear this silly thing has actually been approved for production. We're confused as to why Mini would show both this atrocity as well as the Roadster, which you will remember made our list of good cars. Regardless, this is one ugly car in person. Moving on. Number three, the Honda Accord Cross Tour. Honda says it's not an SUV. We beg to differ. It's an SUV that we bet that Sir Mix-a-Lot wouldn't even be caught dead in. See, it's got a big back end, huge, huge round triple X throwdown. <sighs> Number two, the Spiker C8 Aileron Spider. Bulger is an understatement. And unfortunately for Spiker, even Saudi princes aren't as well off as they used to be. The only thing more expensive and more ostentatious than this car would be Rosie O'Donnell wrestling Oprah in that jello that we talked about earlier. Number one, the Chevy Volt. The Chevy Volt. While the world continues to wait for GM's electric car that will be available real soon now, the Mini EV, the Nissan Leaf, the Tesla Roadster are already in very real, albeit limited, production. By the time the Volt does manage to ship in limited quantities, it'll already be so far behind the curve that nobody will care except for the GM management in charge of the production, who will be looking for new jobs in 2011. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another installment of Driving Sports TV Extra. I'm Aaron Bartel. Have a good night.